Hey YouTube, today we're going to be comparing and reviewing two different grinders, the Niche Zero and the Barazza 270WI. We're going to compare the features and then at the end we're going to compare which one tastes better. But first off, I just want to say thank you for tuning in to Kabeen's Coffee Corner. This channel is designed to help you choose the coffee gear you want to brew with at home. If you could please do me a favor and please subscribe and like this video if you find it helpful. If you're looking at purchasing any gear, please use the links below in the description where I will make a slight commission at no extra charge to you. Also, I do have a Patreon account, so if you would like to support me there, that would be great. If not, that's totally cool too. I also have an Instagram called Cabine's Coffee Corner. You can follow me there as well. Let's dive into it. So right here, I got the Barazza 270WI. I think it comes in at about $580, give or take. And I got the Niche Zero, which after taxes and shipped to my door, it was $735. This one also has a lot of difficulty to get your hands on. It's been a tough, tough process for a lot of people to get a hands on. You have to pre-order it through Indiegogo, and it's kind of a complicated process. I stayed up till four o'clock in the morning to pre-order this and get it in my house. So first off, I do want to um, start with some of the unique differences between the two. This one has a scale inside of it. So when you grind your coffee, it'll grind the exact amount of weight that you want it to. So if you want an 18 gram shot, you click a button and it's going to grind 18 grams and it has a Kaya's uh, scale built into it, which is one of the most accurate scales that you can buy out there. So you always will know exactly how much coffee going in there versus this one you have to single dose, which means you have to weigh out your beans and then pour it into there and then grind directly back in there. So it's only meant to do a, a little bit of coffee at a time where this one you're supposed to fill the hopper halfway, things like that with it to go ahead and grind it. This one comes with this little, um, I don't know what this is called, but basically a thing that you can grind coffee into so you can pour it into like a pour over or whatever or if you have a flare or anything like that. It also has these adjustable arms which is acts as the scale which you can put a portafilter in and it will hold it like so so you can grind directly into the portafilter. The Niche Zero comes with this 58 millimeter dosing cup. This dosing cup has a little lip on the side of it, so you go, you pour it directly into your portafilter. It had, it now has smooth interior, so it doesn't get a lot of static or clumping on the inside of it. So it's pretty easy to do and pretty straightforward. So you just take your portafilter, you put it on top of the dosing funnel, and flip it over and give it a couple shakes, and you should be good to go. And then you might have to do some weight distribution, things like that, but you should be good to go that way. And that's how that works. It has wooden accents. One of the my favorite features about this one versus the Barazza is on the back here, it has built-in cord storage. Versus this one has this long cable that there's nothing to do with it except put it on your counter. Um, so this gives me a little bit cleaner of a look. However, the cable is a little bit longer on the Barazza than it was on the Niche. The Niche build quality is overall quite a bit better. This is substantially heavier than the Barazza and it's built well. This is metal casing versus plastic casing here. Um, this thing's kind of cheap, but the reason why is they wanted to get the best grind that you possibly could at the cheapest footprint, which means they had to make a plastic body versus a metal body, things like that on it. This has a lot of stepless adjustments. This one has 270 degrees where you rotate the top and then rotate the bottom of it. This one you can do pour over and Chemex and things like that as well as espresso and it's good for both. This one is claims to be everything, but really I find it best only for espresso. I actually bought this from a friend who bought it for pour overs and he just was not happy with it. So I bought it from him for espresso. Uh, this one, the outer burr moves versus the inner burr, which is a little bit different on normal grinders. The, gr the burr set on this one is quite a bit bigger than this one. However, one, this one takes about six seconds to grind. This one takes 20 seconds. This one, however, because of its metal body is quieter. I think that's mostly it for features. One of the things I like about this one versus that one is this one is easier to dial in, in my opinion, because it can kind of get confusing when you have to jump from this top dial here and this bottom dial. 
and figure out which one you actually want to move based off of your grind setting. This one just has one adjustment right here. Pretty easy, pretty straightforward to take apart. It also comes with a fun little brush. So you got that going for you. Um, so now it gets into the nitty gritty of this is which one do I like better? Is it worth extra money to get the niche? Is it not, um, I think one of the big things is the niche I've only had for a couple months, a month or so, month and a half. And one of the, the only problem that I've ever had with it is this bolt on the inside has came out a little bit and unscrewed. So I've had to tighten that and they include the correct screwdriver or whatever you want to call it to fix that problem. I did use this in like kind of a commercial setting where I did an event and pulled like 30 shots within an hour with this thing and it held up pretty well. I could not do that with this machine, however. And that's when that bolt problem came out. This little guy, I've had an extraordinary amount of problems with. I've replaced the motor twice. I've replaced a couple fuses. I've replaced the circuit board. I've replaced this little ring thing here. I've spent, I've probably put in $300 worth of maintenance requests on it or uh, parts, warranty requests, there we go. About $300 worth of warranty quest. However, Baratza has covered all of those for free. Their only substance is that they'll send me the part for free, I just need to fix it and they'll give me step-to-step -step instructions on what to do and how to fix the grinder. And they've been very, very good at fixing it pretty quickly. However, like the last time I broke it on a Saturday, couldn't let them know till Monday because their offices were closed and then the part got in and it took like, it took probably about a week and a half for me to get this up and going again from when it broke down. That can be a real pain if that's your only espresso grinder, which for most people it probably would be at their house to be out a grinder for that long. However, they did take care of it and they've sent me all those parts for free. They said that they could fix it for me, but I would have to ship them the grinder at my expense. So it's up to me. And all these replacements have been super, super easy and pretty straightforward. And I haven't had a problem doing those at all at home. But that is a huge concern with the grinder. But at least they know the problems and they take care of it. And you don't have to worry too much about it. Um, this one, I don't know. I haven't heard of a lot of people having significant problems with it outside of that one little bolt here which is a two second fix and you don't even have to submit a warranty claim or anything like that however i've heard that the people at niche are very very good at customer service and have gotten back to people really quickly if there has been an issue mostly out of the box if there was something missing or something wrong with it out of the box that's been the probably the majority of the warranty claims that i've heard now when it comes to grinding, which one is better, which one would I use all the time. So what I did is I pulled a lot of shots um, back to back with these things. I've been using them both regularly for the past month and a half, trying to compare them side by side. Um, keep in mind the burrs in the niche are a lot newer since it's only a month old versus I don't, I don't know how old those burrs are in there. So if you think seasoning burrs is a thing, um, then these probably wouldn't be seasoned. Uh, I've probably ran about 20 pounds of coffee through them, give or take on that. Um, but I pulled lots of shots back to back, used them both regularly for the past month, and a lot of different things with these things. I recently pulled a lot of shots back to back in the mornings and sipping both of these between some water, and I used a puck press in the same distribution technique and every everything I did was identical the time of the shots were identical the weight of the shots were identical the since it was a puck press the tamping was exactly identical in level and the same pressure every single time on these things and when I put these shots side by side I would give it to the niche but barely not a ton not as significantly as I expected for this grinder I tasted more con complexity with the niche than I did with the Baratza. I, I tasted a lot more significant of the notes that were on the bag with that one than I did this one. However, I don't think I would complain at the results of this guy right here. I think it did 
a good enough job. I think if you didn't have a niche or something higher than the Barata, you wouldn't really complain about the shots that you're getting with it. I've seen up until the niche released, I've seen a lot of these like sitting next to expensive machines like a Linea Mini or a Rocket or things like that. And now I've seen a lot of people replace this with this. And I think a lot of that power is the fact that you can do pour overs and you have all of that range of motion in there. You can, you can single dose, which is a big thing here, which is basically you can take 18 grams or 20 grams or whatever you do for your shots and you can just grind that at the same time and you don't have to worry about changing your hopper of beans. When you change, when you take out the hopper and take out the beans in here, you're still gonna have to grind through about this much or so that's at the bottom of there that doesn't really come out. Versus this one, I want an Ethiopian one day, I can grind it. If I want a Colombian the next day, I can grind it and it's not a hassle to do that and that's where I think this thing wins. The reason why I wanted to get this grinder over this is one, there's a lot of hype around it, is two, my wife recently switched to decaf coffee, which means this thing wouldn't really work very well because she would be grinding decaf and then I would be grinding non-decaf. So I was hand grinding for about six months before this thing came in the mail while my wife used this for decaf. Now that we have this, we she can pull her decaf, change it to the setting that she needs to, and then I can change it for whatever origin of beans I'm using for, or I can switch it over to a V60 or the fellow stag or whatever I want to brew with, and it does it all well. Overall, if if that wasn't the case, if I wasn't single dosing, I would save myself a lot of hassle on getting this thing and I would save myself about $200 and I would probably pick up this and then I would probably spend $200 on a hand grinder and have that as a backup for when this thing goes down. And that's kind of what my thoughts are on it. I've been pleasantly surprised with both of these. Um, this thing is loud and can wake up kids or w whatever you have in the morning. This thing still isn't the quietest, but it's a lot better. But this thing only takes six seconds to grind. I think the workflow in the morning, it's a lot easier just to shove your portafilter right there, grind straight into it. You're good to go versus doing the flippy thing here in pre-dosing your beans and having to weigh this out. It's really nice not to have to weigh out beans like this and know that it's gonna be accurate pretty much every single time, or at least it's gonna tell me the exact number. So if it's a gram or two high, It'll let me know that. This works really well to grind directly into, and it also works really well to dose into the robot portafilter since that's not a 58 millimeter. This isn't gonna work for the robot. You're still gonna have to like kind of dump it in that way. This also isn't gonna work for the flare. You're still gonna have to kind of dump it in this way. Versus this guy pours really, really easy into the flare and really, really easy into the robot with no issues whatsoever on it. And that's kind of one of the things I like because primarily I was using this for the flare and the robot. I recently upgraded to a 58 millimeter port filter. Once the flare 58 comes out, then this is gonna be also pretty nice for that because it does flip over pretty well. So overall, the niche is better, but it's not crazy better. It's not blowing my mind out of the water better. I think it's more when it comes down to features, build quality, um, the wooden accents are kind of neat. These are not functional. They actually have rubber underneath of them, so they spin a little bit, but I don't know. I like this one better, but I wouldn't say that it's necessarily, if you already have this, worth $735 to upgrade to this grinder when you can buy this for 580, or you can buy this without the scale for like 400, I think. I think it's 400 bucks without the scale. So either way, it's great. Um, I am, however, giving this away, or I'm selling this to one of my buddies here in town who doesn't have a good grinder, and I'm gonna keep the niche at home, and I'm gonna be happy with it, and I hope that it lasts me a long time, and I hope that this stays working for my friend. If not, I'm gonna fix it for him and help him out that way. So you do gotta expect some maintenance, but you will be saving $150 when it comes to it. And you might miss a little bit of grind quality, but you're not gonna know the difference unless you have a better grinder. So I hope you found this useful. Do you have these grinders? Have you, do you agree with the fact that this is slightly better but not blowing out of the water? Or are your results completely different? Did you upgrade from this to the niche? Do you regret it? Do you 
What's your thoughts? I want to know. I want to hear from you. Let me know in the comments on what you think. And first off, I just want to say thank you for watching.